Welcome back to DS Trucks. In today's video, we're going to be modifying our Salt Dog Spreader. And uh, what we're going to be doing is adding another vibrator to this thing. It only comes with one vibrator. And uh, let's take a look. How handy is that on the 23 Super Duties to put your foot into the into that uh, whatever it would be called a step. But anyway. We're going to be adding a vibrator to this spreader today because they give you one right here where you can see all that salt is accumulating. But with the one vibrator with this spreader, I end up getting the most uneven feeding of the spreader. And with that, it ends up just emptying one half, leaving the other half of the spreader full and all the material doesn't come out then I turn on the vibrator and I have to leave it on because it has to vibrate everything across the whole spreader because it only feeds one side so I'm hoping that if I were to add a second vibrator it will feed more evenly and ultimately flow more material out so before we take this whole spreader out of here and we have to unplug everything it's kind of a headache but Let's actually talk about the pros and cons of this spreader and some of the modifications I've had to do over the years. So the first thing that ended up being a big issue with this spreader is the inverted V that is in here. As you can see, it's down there. It's stainless steel. It will not stay in place. It just won't stay there from the factory so what I've done is added some aluminum angle iron to this if you look right there you can see that that aluminum angles right there because without that it was just flopping around I don't know if that was an issue from the factory or error from the factory or if that's how they all are but the vibrator would vibrate one side of the of the material and as the material would become heavier on one side it would just move this thing over and then it would just jam the whole the whole auger because the auger is just not powerful enough to move the material if it gets overweighted or overloaded so that was the issue that we had now hopefully by adding a second vibrator it will feed more evenly and probably bring more material down but I would try not to use the vibrator too much because in doing so, it would get unevenly distribution, uneven distribution of the material out of the spreader. And I ended up with too much material on the left side. So hopefully this works. I, I'm not sure if one of the issues I guess could happen is there could be too much feed and that would overload the auger but i'm not sure if that would be the case or not but aside from that the spreader is pretty good it holds two yards of material that's pretty good considering some of the more expensive units can only hold like 1.5 1.8 you get the big western 1.8 with the big lids and all that the big opening lids you can get those lids for this too but the tarp is okay for me because we can overload it a little and we could just uh, throw the tarp on top of it and I will say us overloading this thing you put two yards in it and then you just put like a third on top and leave a mountain on top it has handled it it's not cracked it's not damaged last time the guy was like I'm not an experienced loader and he's loading the truck and he's banging into the spreader with the machine and I'm just sitting there like, <laughs> just like, dang, like, dude, <laughs> like, well, <laughs> he got a giant loader banging into this thing. But the, I looked in here and there was not a, there was no damage, not a scratch or anything. It just, it just got banged on a little bit. <laughs> so overall, the spreader is the, the hopper, the poly, all that stuff is good. It hasn't cracked. I have one of these that did crack. I have a one yard version of it that that cracked and the reason it cracked is because through all the cold the hot and cold cycles the expansion and contraction the grate was like on top and it was too tight of a fit and it contracted real tight in the cold 
and it didn't have enough room so it cracked right where the grate touches the poly but other than that no real issues out of these salt dog spreaders with the with the poly hopper just the feed isn't that fast and it can sometimes take a little bit of time to get your material out of it where some of the other spreaders will dump the material way 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 quicker and another con i guess pro and a con would be the spinner which is down there is one of the cheaper ones in the industry although still quite expensive um this spinner is uh, right here it's pretty cheap it's but that's why i say it's a pro and a con i can take this thing off and set it in my bed of my truck not that hard to do not impossible not too heavy some of the nicer spreaders with better pattern and whatever they cannot be handled that easily this one is literally the most basic design that you can have for a spreader and it just it's something i can handle and put in my truck put in the bed of my truck when i need to tow because i still need to tow trailers and everything and it does work out it throws to the left if you don't have this little diverter in here right there it, it's dark you can't see it there's a little diverter you have to take your diverter and jack it all the way over one way and it starts to throw a little bit nicer but if you don't do that and just let it fall onto the spinner it throws to the left and to like un and also underneath the truck so the pattern is just screwed up you won't have anything on the right side of the truck and you'll have everything on the left side and the pattern won't be right because it's actually trying to throw this, the material under the truck so w by playing with this diverter that's in here then you do get a little more better spread but the saw dog's just not the best at, at least this version of it this is not their pro series or anything like that it's just not the best spread pattern that you could ever get but at the same time you get a smaller spinner that you can take off and you could use the truck for towing a trailer or whatever the other spinners come off too but then you gotta you gotta uh you've got to lift those spinners up and i don't know if that would be as doable as it is with this smaller spinner um but another thing too with this with this uh salt dog and it's not like that with everyone i don't know of another company that even sells one like this with all stainless steel components inside for the most part like obviously the bar going across the top and the metal grade and stuff on top is not stainless but the auger in this is stainless and the inverted V is stainless but mainly that auger being stainless after the number of years i had this thing maybe four years i think the auger still looks brand new and it's just a stainless steel auger same with the other one one yarder that i had for a number of years it's still a, a, a new auger in there it, it looks new and it's just a stainless steel auger so with uh some of the components being cheaper basic like the spinner yeah it's cheaper but sometimes they get damaged and at least if it gets damaged it's easier to replace it's easier to get parts you can buy any single part out of this out of the spinner and you can just fix the part you don't have to get the whole spinner so you can crush this whole spinner reuse the motors because someone did that they like backed into something jacked the spinner and i just replaced a few parts on the spinner not the whole thing and even this spinner by itself is like seven hundred dollars maybe more not by now so it's the cheaper one just imagine what those more expensive spinners cost so very basic the very minimum it does get the job done and you're able to uh replace it and repair it as needed because the accidents happen and uh aside from them getting damaged they've never broken aside from getting crushed when someone backs into something so at the end of the day you know when you have employees uh sometimes things get broken and maybe this cheaper salt dog is a good solution for those situations so i gotta unhook it pull it out and see if i can't get this second vibrator installed 
So I've just got this vibrator mounted in the salt spreader underneath. I was able to put a plate on the bottom side, not on the top side. Just a stainless steel plate that was supplied with the kit right there. Hopefully this works out. On this side, they've added material. If you can see like the hump, I'm not sure if it's double walled there. It seems like it's thicker material right there. On this, there's actually two layers to the spreader. So hopefully this works. Uh, it's secured through here. <laughs> and the only thing I've got to do before I can run it or try to run it is I need another end here, another connector. So I put in an order for that. But I'm kind of curious on how this thing works. Anyway, see you guys at the next scene. And that's it. I've got everything back together. I've got the hitch back on the truck so I can tow. And uh, yeah, I put these little tie downs so I can hold my hold my rubber flap up. I've got my camera and stuff hooked up working. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll see what happens with this vibrator and see if it works. Um, I could actually physically cut a bigger hole through it, and that way it wouldn't have that space. I think in tightening the bolts, it closes the space between the two layers of plastic, I think. But uh, I don't know, because this is a double-walled spreader, so I guess we'll see. But I'm going to wrap this video up, but I got another question. Do you guys think this Kubota could lift? the rear of the dually would it have enough capacity is the truck too heavy i'm sure the front's too heavy because the end is on the front but it's the rear is the rear too heavy so we're going to close out the video we're going to do that on camera just to end the video and uh i guess that'll be just for fun but let's go ahead and close this out <laughs> my name is sean this is ds trucks stay tuned for another minute or so and see if this Machine will lift this truck. Anyway, see you in the next one. Over and out. All right, moment of truth. Can the Kubota do it? Can the waste safe do it? I'm sure the waste safe.
So there you have it. The Kubota can lift the rear of the 23-450 dually with a spreader on it, even though the spreader is empty, but still pretty impressive. It doesn't seem to be that heavy in the rear, I guess. It wasn't even like stressing at all. So with these concrete blocks, they're said to weigh 3,300 each. The machine picked these up but it was struggling a little more it was tippy a little had to be careful that that wasn't really tippy and you can kind of see where in the bucket we did it kind of toward the front of the bucket you know maybe here so that's more leverage away i mean if it were here closer to the back then it can lift more but pretty impressive with the machine I'm kind of curious if my snowblower rack that we use to hold our machines, our snowblowers, could hold up the rear of the truck. So stay tuned to the channel because we'll be testing that next. But anyway, I just wanted to do that real fast. My name is Sean. This is DS Trucks. Hope to see you in the next one. Over and out.